So today we will have, okay, to go again with the first chapter uh, about some fundamentals about vibration and we will learn today how to, to deal with the equivalent stiffness of a mechanical system, a vibrating mechanical system. Now, uh, today we try to learn uh, first uh, to understand what is the concept of a spring, what's a spring, how we can model a spring, what means a spring actually. When we use a spring in a model, what, what does that mean? Okay, this is uh, the first uh, outcome. The second one is, uh, after understanding what's a spring, and a spring is characterized by its stiffness, mostly denoted K, uh, you will learn how to calculate the stiffness. And mainly, uh, when the, the, the mechanical system is complex or is more than one part uh, to try to calculate uh, what is the equivalent stiffness to represent the system by one or more stiffnesses uh, especially one uh, stiff okay it's not exactly but if it is one degree of freedom uh, the system will try to represent the whole system even there is uh, multiple parts we try to represent it by just one spring one equivalent spring uh, so, we will uh, present first the spring elements and uh, we will discuss later about equivalent stiffness and we will have, of course, some examples. Mostly the examples, we will uh, deal with them this afternoon in, in tutorial times. Okay, spring elements, this is our first part. So. What are springs? The spring is actually, no, when I say springs, what, what, what uh, comes to your mind is the helical springs that we are, uh, okay, the most common springs. Now, uh, it's not only that. Springs in, in mechanics and in vibration represent a more general, a certain class of material, class of bodies that are uh, that can deform. Springs use it for deformable bodies. So springs are mechanical elements that are able to deform. They are, it's like the opposite of the rigid bodies. As soon as we have some deformation, uh, it's able to consider and to model that body with spring. I'm saying not only spring, uh, because uh, the body can have multiple uh, physics, multiple uh, phenomena. So at least the deformation part, uh, we can model it using a spring. So the springs, when we have in a model, springs are, are mechanical elements, mechanical parts, mechanical bodies that are able to deform. Okay, so we have uh, a deformation, a distortion of the body. Now, mostly, when we consider a spring, we assume that its mass is negligible, that uh, the mass is insignificant. So when we model a spring, we don't consider its inertia. This is uh, one advantage. It's, it's like, okay, we will see later what happens if the body ha has deformation but has, has mass? We will see how, how we will deal with that. So first, springs, this is what we need to keep in mind. Springs are deformable elements, deformable parts that uh, has negligible mass. And also, and this is so important for us, they are, we assume that they, they don't dissipate energy. The deformation, uh, the process of deformation of springs conserves energy. So when we deform a spring, the energy that we have used to deform that spring is completely stored in the spring and no energy is dissipated. There is no damping. 
So we don't lose energy when we deform the spring. And this is so important because if we don't lose energy, we don't dissipate energy, the deformation is reversible. So when we apply a force to deform the spring, for example, to compress the spring, the spring is, is deformed, the energy is stored. Now, if we release the spring, the spring come back to its original position. The, the, the spring is, is back to the undeformed shape. So the, the, the process is reversible. We can deform and undeform the, the spring. And it comes back, when we undeform the spring, it comes back to its original position, original length. So it's so important to have that the body is, is deformable. It's the opposite to a rigid body. It has no inertia. OK, mostly it has a little, but we, we, we assume there isn't. OK, it's insignificant. So we don't consider inertia for springs. And also, there is no dissipation of energy. There is no damping. Also, this is assumption. Now, I, I, OK, after some slides, we'll see how if, if the body is, is complex and if the body uh, has all of this. If the body deforms but has inertia, but, but it dissipates some energy, we'll deal with this. Now, at least when you have a spring, we consider that the body only deforms, but deforms without dissipating any energy. So all the energy is conserved and that the body has no inertia. Now, this is so important and this is what we call its elastic energy. And this is what we say, elastic deformation. Elastic deformation, it means that the, the deformation is reversible. We can deform, but undeform the spring. And the energy that we store in, 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 the, in the spring, when we deform it, we store it, the potential energy. So when deforming the spring, the, we are storing potential energy in the body. It's like when we store, when we increase the velocity of, of a mass, we are storing kinetic energy. When we increase the formation of a spring, we store potential energy. Now after that, if we undeform the spring, we restitute back this, this energy to the mechanical system. So uh, the springs are kind of containers, are kind of reservoirs, uh, are kind of a storage, storage bag of a potential energy. And the more the stiffness is, the more we can store potential energy in the system. So springs are deformable bodies with no inertia, with no damping, in which we can deform, and we can store elastic energy. And this is what we have learned in the first chapter. Elastic energy is a kind, is one of the two kinds of potential energy. For potential energy, we can have either elastic energy or gravitational or gravi uh, gravity uh, potential energy. So this is the common example. This is okay. When when I say spring, this is what we, uh, comes uh, to our mind. But uh, it's not only this one. Even a more complex body. And we will see at the end, this is the, 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 uh, the aim of this uh, part. We'll see that uh, 
any uh, body that can deform, we can have a certain representation of its deformation using springs. So this is only one and one example, and this is the most common example. This is the helical spring. Now, for a spring, mostly we characterize the spring, we differentiate the springs by their stiffness. The stiffness is the ability of the body to resist to deformation. If the spring has low stiffness, it means that it can deform easily. If the stiffness is high, it will deform hardly. Okay, uh, there's one thing, okay. There's one thing that I have missed it. Uh, yes, it should appear this one. Okay, one thing. Okay, sorry for this. Let's go. So these are the stiffness and they are, okay. They are represented by their stiffness and the stiffness is mostly denoted as K. Okay, K the stiffness. Now if K is low, it means that the spring is soft. It's soft, it means, okay, with uh, a certain force, you can deform it a lot. Now, if K is high, it means that with, with the same force, you will deform it only for uh, a, a little, okay? Now, in linear springs, in linear springs, and this is what we will use in this course. Now, in linear springs, the force, so if you have a spring, and you apply a certain force F, the deformation, for example here X, the stretching. Now when I say X here for a spring, always I start with, with the original uh, unstretched position. So it means here that, okay, uh, I would take another color maybe, that this is from here to here, is the original length of the spring, L0, the unstretched length of the spring. So X or X is this one. And I will have that the length of the spring is its original length plus X. X is how much the spring is stretched or compressed. Now, if I apply a certain force F, the, the stretching is, will follow in a linear way. What? I have a certain stretching, for example, X1. And to this, to have this, level of stretching, I need a force F1. Now, if I want a double, if I want a stretching of 2X1, for this I need to apply the double of force. This is what means linear. I mean it's proportional. It may appear that it's but it's not the kind or it's not the case if it is nonlinear. It will be, a, okay, F here, it will be twice F1. And then so on. If I want 3X1, it will be 3F1. If I will multiply the force by 10, I will multiply the stretching by 10. It's always proportional. And this is only 
the case, I insist in, on this in case of linear springs. Now, the stiffness is the slope here of, of the line. So the slope of the line here is the stiffness. Okay, so the force in case of a linear spring is proportional to the deformation, is proportional to the stretching or compression. So what we, when we write the force for a spring, it is always F equal K times X. Now the energy, and it is a potential energy, it is equal to half k x squared. Now the potential energy, for example, if I want the potential energy uh, up to, when we deform it up to x1, it will be the area here under the curve. This is if uh, this one, and it is f1 times x1 divided by 2 because it is an area of a triangle. So this is the case of linear springs. If it is nonlinear, it's the, the equation will be different, but it's, it's out of our scope here. Now, what happens if, if I have a common body? In a common body, mostly it is possible to deform. So I will have some deformation. But also, it has a certain mass and it can dissipate some energy. So for the body, I can have the three. I can have deformation, elastic deformation. I can have the uh, inertia because there is some mass and it can dissipate some energy. So I have some damping. So in that case, each mass, I can represent it by three elements. So I'll take the elastic deformation, I will represent it by a spring. So the spring will represent, in that case, the deformation part. It will represent the physics of deformation of that body. So the deformation of the body is represented by, by a spring. Now, the energy that was dissipated will be represented by, by a damping element. And, okay, the inertia will be represented by a mass. So for a usual or a common body, I, I will represent the body by three parts. I just am separating all phenomena. I'm separating the deformation from dissipation from inertia. I'm considering all of them separately. So when we represent in a system a spring, it does, does not mean that the real shape of the body or the body is really a spring. But just I'm representing the deformation of that body. A damping element represents the dissipation part of the body and the mass or the inertia i will represent all the mass of the body now here today we will focus on the first part how if i have a usual body to represent or to model the first part how to model the elastic deformation how to model and how to bring the K for, for a body. How to determine how to calculate the equivalent stiffness of a body. Okay, equivalent stiffness. Let's start, okay. We we'll go to the... Uh, how to see how to calculate the equivalent stiffness. Okay, and we will focus on only on this part. Now, there is two ways to determine the
the equivalent stiffness of a body either by a force analysis or by energy analysis now we have said for a spring that the force is F equal K stiffness times X so the idea first here is to express the force okay to apply a certain force on the body and to see that how the force is related to the deformation X and what we will obtain here in between here what we will have here this will be the stiffness okay so we consider the body and we study it with in a static way we make a static analysis with the free body diagram and so on if possible if it is so complex if easy we can make a rapid and fast analysis and we see how the force F is related to X, the deformation, how the force is related to the displacement. Now, in this case, what is in front of the displacement here, this is will be the whole expression of our K. This is expression of the stiffness of the body. We can do the same with a, an energy analysis. And we will express the potential energy in terms of deformation. We can do this also. If you have one body or even it is multiple bodies, a mechanical system, we can do this. We try, okay, this is not the force. This is, should be uh, the potential energy V. So here we have V. I will express V, the potential energy, in terms of X square. And what's in here, this one, will be the stiffness. So I can do either one. It depends on how easy the first or the second. If it is easy to, to, to express the force, we'll do it with the force. If it is easy to do it with the energy, we'll do it with the energy. Okay? So, to determine the equivalent stiffness K of this body, I will either calculate the force applied on it or the potential energy applied on, on it. And the proportionality coefficient here is K is the stiffness. And here, I will, okay, instead, I will uh, say, I will calculate it twice. If you want, you can, okay, bring the two here. I will cal calculate twice the potential energy. And K is the proportionality coefficient with X square. So it is either one. Now, uh, okay, here we will not do it in detail. I'm going uh, here to give some expression. If it is a helical spring, the stiffness is expressed in terms of the shear modulus of the material. So it will depend on the material if it is steel or, or other thing, but okay, mostly in steel. Uh, G is the shear modulus of steel, if the material here is steel. Uh, small d. Uh, is the wire diameter and uh, capital D is the coil diameter and N is the number of turners here. Okay, so this is, with this expression, we can calculate the stiffness of a helical spring. Now, if we have a bar, and this is maybe uh, one of the uh, the easy examples how to use the force. If I will, I have a bar here, and for the bar, I will uh, apply a force, and I will see how much is it is st okay. Stretch the bar. Okay. If we review a little bit from from here, we need a little bit from mechanics of material. The force is equal 
to the area, the cross-sectional area here, this one. This is A. Time is sigma, the stress. Now, we have for an elastic material that the stress is the Young's modulus times the strain, the deformation epsilon. And the epsilon is, will be, okay, if I will apply a force F here, it will, the length, the total length will be, okay, increased by X. Now, the deformation will be X divided by the length of the bar. This is L, the original one. So, if I will substitute here uh, X over L in this first expression of sigma, then I will uh, substitute sigma, the stress, in this expression of force. I will have this equation, that the force is E, the Young's modulus, times A, the cross-sectional area of the bar, and divided by L. So, actually, I will take only this one as... This is what I, I, I mean before, and this is how we calculate equivalent stiffness. This is what is in front of the X. This is the K. This is the stiffness of the bar. So I don't need to represent the bar by OK and model the bar as it is. I will represent, instead of using the bar, I will use, instead of it, a spring. with the stiffness K, and K will be equal to the E, the Young's modulus of the material, A, the cross-sectional area of the bar or the rod, and L, it is the length of the bar or the rod. Okay, so I don't, I will not use in my model this one, I will use only as if the bar is a spring. And this is what I will do for all mechanical parts, for all deformable mechanical parts. Now, if it is a cantilevered beam, okay, also we can consider F, I can make the, 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 the force diagrams, calculate the moment, and C, calculate the deflection here, how much will be the deflection. And I can deduce this, that the stiffness of the beam, in this case, is 3 EI over L cubic. E is the Young modulus. I here, be careful, I is not the mass moment of inertia. It is the area moment of inertia. Now, for example, if the beam here is has a rectangular shape, if the cross-section of the beam, beam is like this one, and the thickness here is, uh, is H, for example, and if its width is, for example, B. Now, here the area moment of inertia I, this is the area. Please be careful for this one. We have a mass moment of inertia of which the unit is kilogram meter square. Now here the moment of inertia, it is a distance, it is meter power four. Here, if the cross-sectional area is, is rectangular, I will be B times H cubic divided by 12. Now, if the cross-section is different, okay, we need to go to the book of mechanics on material and find what will be the I for that case. So if we have a beam, which is blocked here in one end, and we apply a force at the other end, 
So in this case, we will have K, the stiffness, equal 3 EI over L cubed. And I is depending on the cross-sectional area. Now, I gave here only if the area is, is rectangular. Now, if we have, for example, a hollow shaft which working under torsion, now this one is, the stiffness is given here. It is pi g. g again here, it is the shear modulus divided by 32 L, L is the length, this is L. D is the outer diameter and small d is the inner diameter. Okay, so this is small d and this is capital D. Okay, now here just be careful that our deformation parameter here is theta. Now this K relates the moment is not exactly the force. We will have that the moment will be K times theta. And the potential energy in this case will be one half K theta square. This is a rotational stiffness. Now, how we deal with multiple springs? It depends on how they are connected together. Now, if I have multiple bodies, for example, a beam and a road, and each one I can represent them by a spring. Now, later I need to bring one spring for both together. Now, it depends. Now, if the springs are connected in series, like this one, what we need is, it is to add not the springs together. Now, this one, for example, with, it has K1. This two, and I have K3, K4, and a uh, spring Kn. I can only add the inverse of each one. One over K, this is the equivalent stiffness actually. We can sometimes denote it as KE. So I can represent all of this only by one spring. They are equivalent to one spring with a stiffness K and K is such as one over K is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 plus until 1 over kn. Now, if they are in parallel, it's different. Okay, if they now in parallel, now in parallel, yes. In parallel, we can add the stiffness. So, this case, if we, I have multiple springs, this one, which are connected in parallel, K2, and they have Kn, okay? I can, all of these, represent them by just one spring with a stiffness K, and K is equal to the stiffness of all of them to the stiffness of all of them, okay? This morning, uh, I have uh, explained uh, the concept of springs and I have gave uh, multiple ways how to calculate the stiffness of springs uh, of for multiple cases. Uh, we are going to do uh, some examples and these examples uh, are considered from our textbook uh, which is shown here. Now, uh, the first example is uh, the to calculate the equivalent stiffness of the 
a suspension system. So here we have this figure shows a suspension system of a freight truck with parallel spring arrangement. Here the springs are arranged in parallel. And we are asked to find uh, the equivalent spring constant. So spring constant, spring stiffness is the same thing. So uh, the question asks us to uh, calculate the equivalent spring constant of the suspension if each of these three helical springs, so each one here, is made of steel. So the material used for these springs are steel. And uh, this considered type of steel has a shear modulus of 80 uh, gigapascal or 80 10 power 9 newton per meter square and has five effective turns and a, a mean coil diameter capital D of 20 centimeter and a wire diameter of two centimeters. Okay. Yes, this morning we have suggested to, to calculate first the stiffness of one spring using the formula uh, of the helical uh, spring and then consider that these three springs are in parallel and use the formula for parallel springs. What will be the, the, the stiffness if I would like to, uh, okay, here I have these three springs together. I would like to represent them all by just one spring with a stiffness k. So if I want to do this one, what will be the value of k? So uh, as we have said, uh, we will calculate the spring only for uh, one uh, spring. And then we will consider that uh, they are uh, in parallel and calculate the, uh, the stiffness of all the three together. Okay, uh, so just for one spring, okay, for example, the first one, uh, but they are all equal actually. So it will be equal to K2, uh, it will be equal to K3. So it is G, the shear modulus, small d, the wire diameter, power 4, divided by 8, times n, the number of turns, and d cubic. Okay, d cubic, and uh, we need just to substitute, we have here, 80, uh, okay, 80, uh, okay, 80, 10 power 9, then time is, D is uh, 2 centimeters, so it will be 0 point zero two power four and divided by eight times five and times the helical uh, diameter is 
20 centimeters, so it is only 0 0.2 power 3. And this is uh, if we substitute and we calculate, it will be 40,000. Okay, a Newton per meter. This is the unit of a stiffness. Now here it is Newton per meter square. Here d power 4, it will be meter power 4 and down it will be meter uh, cubic. Mm -hmm. So it will be Newton times meter power 4 divided by meter power 5. So at the end we will have Newton per meter. Now this is for one spring for the whole suspension we have, they are in, need to add them together if the springs works in parallel. We need to add them. So it will be just three times K1, any one of them, and it will be 120 thousand or kilo newton per meter okay good now uh, let's move to the second example now in this uh, example we are going to uh, calculate again the equivalent stiffness of a torsional uh, spring of a propeller shaft. Now here, this propeller shaft is built first by a tube here, a torsional tube, with an inner diameter of 0 0.2 and uh, outer diameter of 0 0.3 meter. And later is connected to another tubular uh, torsional, um, torsional tubul uh, tube with uh, inner diameter of 0 0.15 and uh, outer 0 0.25. The first part is 2 meter long, the second part is 3 meter long, and actually we would like to substitute to all of this one spring, one equivalent spring with a stiffness K. A torsion stiffness k and we would like to calculate the equivalent stiffness of this part this is the idea which is we calculate using uh, the torsion shaft uh, the spring for the first part we use the same formula to calculate the spring for the second part and later we use that these two springs, these two part, parts work in series and we th then we calculate their equivalent stiffness. So first we need to calculate the stiffness. I will use KT for the stiffness because it is a torsion. It's a regarding an angle, not a displacement. For KT for the part, the first part uh, A, uh, okay. So, uh, we have said this morning that this is equal to uh, G times uh, pi divided by uh, 32 uh, L and times the outer diameter uh, here d uh, o power 4 actually it's d o of part a minus the uh, one the inner diameter of the part a okay so this is it now uh, I will copy it. Yes, uh, G, we have said it is uh, 80 
then uh, time is 10 power 9 10 power 9 and uh, time is pi L is uh, here first part is 2 meter the outer diameter of A is 0 0.3 and the inner diameter is 0 0.2 okay now uh, I move it now and if we uh, use a calculator and this is what you have done it is 25 actually a million 25.5 million uh, we can say it is 25.525 uh, I will say 53 and uh, 10 power 6 or I will say it is mega Newton per meter mega Newton per meter now I can use the same thing okay uh, let me go to the other page is to to narrow here so Ooh. this is what we have said for the first one and let's uh, do the same for the second one for the, the part uh, B so for B it will be uh, the same formula except it will be for the part B the inner diameter what will change uh, okay the properties of the material will be the same but the length here is 3 meter and uh, the outer diameter is uh, 25 and the inner diameter is uh, 15 centimeter or 0 0.50 now if we substitute here it will be 8.9 million Newton per meter or 8 point 9 actually 0 or 9 uh, mega Newton per per meter now uh, if they are in series actually 1 over K okay 1 over K is equal uh, to 1 over K A plus 1 over K B now if I will work a little bit the equation what I will obtain is that uh, I will have that KT will be equal to KTA times KTB divided by KTA plus KTB uh, okay this is what we will have so uh, I will have so the result I'm using mega Newton or a million of Newton per meter so uh, okay the result at the end will be in mega Newton per meter I will have 25.53 uh, time is and down will be 25.53 plus and I will have 8.90 here and 8.90 here now again with the calculator what we will have is 6.5999 actually 5999 it will be 6.6 6, uh, mega newton per per meter okay good for this one fine we are working uh, quite well uh, yes let's move to this one okay now here what we will have we have one rigid bar here uh, the bar O uh, C a hinged rigid bar of length L the total length of the bar is L is connected by two springs 
it is connected by two springs here. A first spring is connected in the point A, and uh, the second spring is connected in point B. Okay, a force F is uh, applied in C at the end of the bar. Now, assuming that the angular displacement of the bar theta is a small, we will assume that the, the bar uh, angle, the bar rotation is, is a small, we are asked to find the equivalent spring constant here. What if I will, uh, would like to to switch or to change, okay, this whole system I would like to change it to a spring, okay, and a mass, okay, and the displacement of the mass will be x, so the stretching of the spring will be x, and I will apply the same force F here. Now, how to find the mass is the next lecture, okay? I will not deal with it now, but what will be K here? I would like to change this whole mechanical system to only a spring and a mass. Why? Because this one has only one degree of freedom, so I can do it. Why they are not parallel? Now, if the bar is having a translation motion, so the, the displacement in A will be uh, the same as the displacement in B at, in, the, in that case, they are in parallel, yes. Now, when we are a, uh, allowed to consider them in parallel if they have the same displacement. Okay, now it's not the case. Why? Because we are in rotation. The bar OC is rotating about O. So the displacement in A is different from the displacement in B. Actually, here we are uh, obliged to come back and use either the force analysis or the energy analysis. So, uh, in this case, I will calculate the total potential energy of the system, okay? The total potential energy of the system, and then, okay, I will have an expression like I have shown uh, you this today, not this one, this is, should be actually the potential energy, V. So, I will express the potential energy in terms of X. What I will uh, obtain here in front, I will say that this is the, the stiffness. Okay, so here, uh, maybe I will move it here. I will see if I can do it. So, I will calculate the potential energy of, of the, uh, the elastic potential energy here. Okay, of the system. So V, what will be equal V? Now here, uh, I will not consider the mass. I have no uh, no uh, data about the mass if the bar is is has a mass or no. But also, if, even though I will consider only the elastic potential potential energy. Now here I have two springs, so I will calculate the potential energy from the first spring plus the potential energy from the second spring, okay? Now, if I have this, I can add it always. If you have springs in all directions, in series, in parallel, any case, you can always add the potential energy, okay? So this is the, the, the easiest way and the safest way to do it. So I have, I can add the potential energy always and I, uh, I will do it. 
Now, what will be the potential energy of the first spring? The, the potential energy of the spring is one half K, the stiffness, times the, how much it is stretched uh, square. So here I will uh, use this one for each spring. So for the first spring, it is one half, one half. The stiffness here is K1, K1. And how much it is stretched, I will say it is, uh, okay, it is the, the displacement here of the point A. Okay, the displacement here. And this one, let's say it is, uh, I can denote it as XA or X1, it doesn't matter. So this one is XA. How much? This point, the point A will move in the horizontal direction. Okay, so I will say that this is here. X A square. Then uh, I will do the same for the second point for the second spring. So it will be one half K two times uh, X B square and XB will be the displacement. So uh, I will take this one. It is the displacement here. Okay, but this displacement will be a little bit longer. Okay, XB. Okay, I have this expression. What will be next? Because what I, 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 I want to, this is my target. My target is to have one half then a certain expression and, okay, something and in terms of x square. This is what in, I need. So this is my target. Let me keep it a little bit aside. I have a bar originally vertical, okay? Then I will rotate it, okay? Uh, let me take another color just to differentiate. Yes, but it's helpful to keep it this one. So this is the new bar, but I, it's, I will rotate it. Now, I want the displacement in, in, in three points. I want the displacement here, for example, this is A. I want the displacement, uh, okay, here in, in B. And uh, I want the displacement this is it in C, okay? This is XA, this is XB, and this is X. So XA here is L1 sine theta. XB is L2 sine theta. And X is L sine theta. So if I will do this, then I can express XA in terms of X, XB in terms of X. I will substitute back here in the expression of the potential energy, and I will obtain only one expression in terms of x. And in that case, it will be, when I will do this, it will be easy to find the equivalent stiffness. So I will keep the expression of the potential energy a little bit aside. Now I will uh, first, okay, not this one, keep it, uh, okay. yes. Now, uh, yes, let, 
we have said that XA is equal to L1 sine the angle theta. Okay, this is, and I need three, two copies of this. I will have XB is equal L2 sine theta and X is equal to L sine theta. Fine. Now, if I want X A in terms of X, what will be? So uh, let's uh, have this one. Okay, so sine theta will be equal to from here will be equal to uh, X over L and then okay if I will substitute and then okay if I will substitute here in sine theta what I will have is that XA will be uh, L1 over L X okay and uh, if I will substitute in the second one it will be simply L2 over L over LX now okay I have XA in terms of X XB in terms of X I will substitute these two expression now in the expression of the potential energy okay in the expression of V so I will have one half K now here I need to make okay x a square so I will substitute to x a square the expression that I just have established here and I will do the same for x b so it will be L2 square now I have only one expression uh, one uh, the, pot uh, the, ex the expression of the potential energy only in terms of x now I can simplify it a little bit and take uh, x now here y uh, yes it's L2 it's not 2 I'm just okay uh, I can so it is one half I will make everything related to the stiffness between brackets so I will have K1 here plus this one inside okay but I can take X square uh, as a factor I can take X square as a factor so here X square so I can remove the X here and the X here it's actually okay I, I take a side one half I take a side X square what is here this is the equivalent stiffness this is it so actually the equivalent stiffness is 
what is in front of the x square. This is the proportionality coefficient. So I will make this one as final solution. I will clean it a little bit. So uh, not this one. Okay. So the k equivalent is simply So I take the expression of the potential energy here, I remove the half, and I remove the x square. This is it. This is the solution. This is the equivalent stiffness of, of the bar. Uh, OK, uh, I can just uh, OK, remove the bracket. So this is the answer. Now always just the solution will depend on x. So if I change the x, it will uh, we have a different stiffness. Now it is always a stiffness regarding a certain uh, displacement. Now the displacement, we always take it where the force is applied because later when we model this system with a spring and a mass, the, uh, the force is applied on the mass with a displacement x, which is exactly the stretching of the spring. So this one, we have discussed at uh, last lecture uh, Thursday to say that this one is only one degree of freedom. Uh, because uh, here we have, uh, there is the rotation of this uh, L-shaped uh, body and we have this sphere which can rotate and translate but all these parameters we can express them in terms of X. So here in this, let's say complex system, multi-part system, uh, again, uh, we would like to substitute to this because it's one degree of freedom. I can substitute to this one a system which only with one spring and a mass. Okay? And with a certain displacement x. Let's assume that, okay, I will apply, okay, the force will be applied here. So on this point. Now, what will be K? Now, next, next time you will learn how to, 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 to substitute to all of these parts also just one mass. But here, you can at least substitute to this system already a stiffness K. So if there is no solution, there, is, there, will be, there will be always one solution. The magic solution, which is the, the solution of the potential energy. So if you don't find any way to do it, you will have always the safe solution, which is to calculate the potential energy. I will calculate the potential energy. So I have two springs. I will add, calculate the potential energy of each spring. For that, I need to know how much this spring is stretched. Now it's given here, it is X. And then I will uh, find how much the second spring is, is stretched. Now this spring is stretched exactly the same distance as at the motion of the center of mass of the sphere which I denoted as y. And I will have an expression of potential energy in terms of x and y. And at the end, I need to keep only x. So I need to express y in terms of x. So here I can use, OK, I will copy them because uh, I will use more or less the same procedure, OK? I will use more or less the same procedure. So first, 
I have okay uh, these are what I will use so please ignore them for for a little okay so here I, I need to start here I have two springs k1 k2 so the potential energy is the sum of both of them v1 plus v2 so I will have uh, here k1 is stretched by x so I will have the potential energy of the first spring is one half k1 x square then I will have one half for the second one it is one half k2 and actually th this point the motion of this point the center of mass this one let's say it is x2 after that I need to uh, determine x2 in terms of x now here I will consider the rotation here the rotational angle assume that this bar after a cert it will rotate this L shape after a certain while and it will rotate by an angle C so uh, here it's L shape I will just draw it as simple L shape so this one it will be in this direction so I will have okay maybe another color and uh, uh, so this is will be the angle theta of the rotation of the L shape uh, body okay this is let's say the angle theta this is the angle theta now here I can try to find the, the same expression now here X is L1 sine theta okay so X here is again L1 sine theta okay and I will have for the second one here the displacement of this point which is exactly the displacement of the center of mass of the sphere it will be x2 and which is will be equal to this distance L2 sine theta so using the first this first ex equation I have X equal L1 sine theta so it means that sine theta is equal to X over L1 so here it will be equal to L2 divided by L1 and time is X okay now I have X2 in terms of X I will substitute in here okay so I will copy no I don't need these two I can use this expression now here for the first one it will be simply one half simply this is what we have said is simply x square but for the second one it will be uh, k2 l2 over l x square so here it will be simply when I take x square outside it will be simply k1 plus k2 l2 over l 
uh, over here L1 to be L1 down here L1 and I will have L1 here too. So the final expression of the stiffness of this one it will be K1 plus K2 times L2 over L1 square. Okay? So we have this uh, arrangement of springs, multiple springs. And we would like to substitute to this one only one spring, one equivalent spring. First, actually, uh, we start from here. The 2K1 here. The 2K1, they are in parallel, actually. These one are in parallel. So I need to substitute here with just one spring, considering that they are in parallel. Then I will consider them, uh, these 2K3, also with the same thing, that they are in parallel and calculate an equivalent stiffness for this part. Later on, I will have one, only one spring here, I will have K2 and one another spring here. So I will have one, two, three springs in series. So I will calculate one equivalent spring for this whole part. Then I will have for this part one spring and for this part one spring. So I will have two springs in, in and I can calculate the spring for, for these two. And then I will have this one spring plus this one in, in, in series. We need to be to, to go in steps. So first, I will say, I, I will focus on this part only, okay? Uh, I will focus on uh, this part. So I will have for these two springs, I will have K1 from one side and K1 from another side. They are in parallel. And then I can substitute to this one just one spring with I can substitute to this one uh, one spring with a stiffness uh, which is 2K1. Why? Because they are in, in parallel, okay? So here I can substitute to these two just one spring. Now, I can do the same for the two again, and I can substitute to them just one spring with 2K3. Why? Because they, I, we have here two springs in, in parallel. Now, uh, later on, I will have to consider now this left arm together. Let me choose another uh, color or for it. So, uh, and this will be uh, the stiffness for this one. It will be actually, let's say it's for the, the part built from 1 to 3. And this is equal, K of 1 to 3 will be equal to Actually, I should do 1 over K1 to 3 equal to 1 over 2K1 plus 1 over K2 plus 1 over 2K3. So this is uh, 2 
2k1 times k3 uh, k2 and times 2 k3 okay and I need to add them down so I will have 2k1 okay and I will modify it k3 this is k2 but just one time so this is of the purple part the left part here then uh, I need to calculate the equivalent stiffness with the uh, all together until k4 so I need to include let's say uh, with this part include all of them here so I will need to calculate K 1 2 3 4 now I have one arm parallel to the other one so it should be uh, K 1 2 3 plus K4 so it will be uh, what we have here already calculated maybe I can simplify it here uh, just by saying it is it is 4 times uh, K1 and I will move K3 from here okay and I will take this expression okay and plus plus K4 this is K4 okay then uh, now the whole K as if I have this all this one is in series with K5 so uh, here I will have K1 2 3 4 5 all together which is K actually will be uh, both in series so it will be K1 2 3 and I need to multiply on the top by 5 and down I need to add K5 okay and this is it this K what I have s yes it's it's all yes